Hello there, this is John Hall from Right Here Pens with another video pen review. And what we're going to be talking about today is Twisby pens. Um, fairly new to us, possibly not to the pen connoissanti amongst you. Um, they've been around for a while. In fact, the company Twisby, which is based in Taiwan, have been making pens for about 40 years. Um, however, they've made pens for other manufacturers. Um, or other brands, and they're described as an OEM company, which is Original Equipment Manufacturing. And um, whilst they're certainly manufacturing original equipment, it hasn't been for the Twisby brand. So, for instance, um, I've been at a couple of trade shows recently where I've seen Hugo Boss pens. Now, I strongly suspect that the good people at Hugo Boss, tailors all, um, didn't suddenly decide one day to chuck away their scissors and chalk and the other accoutrements of fine tailoring and make a pen. They probably designed something and then went along and had discussions with people who knew how to make pens. And this is what has given rise to the brand. And I mean, going on a bit about this, so I was again in another trade show where I came across a company that makes nothing but pen clips. By the 10,000, I mean huge numbers of them. So if you want a pen clip, do you make it yourself or do you go to a company who can probably make them much cheaper than you can, providing you buy enough of them? So there we are. But anyway, Twisby, back to Twisby. They've been making, as I say, I think probably pretty good pens for a while, but decided to go out on their own and launch their own brand a few years ago. And they had quite an interesting way of going about this. I mean, it's very much been through the... Um, social media that, that, that the brand has developed. They put out a pen and then strangely enough listen very carefully to what people say about it. They invite comment and improve. And then they do another one and they invite comment and they improve. And now they've got to a pretty good level of sophistication I think and produce some pens that really are quite attractive in my view and extraordinarily reasonably priced. Now we were talking about OEM, and um, interestingly, Twisby don't actually make their own nibs. They're made by the very famous and very highly reputed German company, Jovo. So here we are. This is the modern world. Now, when I used to work with OMAS, um, one of the nice things about that was that OMAS made virtually every bit of the pen themselves on the premises. And you knew what the heritage was, you knew who the craftsmen were that had been making the pens, you knew where the designs came from, you knew about the heritage in short. Um, apart, from, in fact, from the fact that the most important part of the pen, in my view, the nib, was although made to Omas's specification, usually made by Bock, or occasionally Jovo. So, there we are. Nobody is completely pure in this respect. And it's an interesting reflection that, um, you know, in a sense it's all down to Adam Smith and division of labour, where individual people start up doing different bits of a job. So forget how many bits he split up making a pin into, but it was several different ones. And he made the point that if each person doing this particular job concentrated on that one little bit, they would get very good at it and very efficient. Um, of course, the downside of that is a degree of alienation um, in that you become rather distant from the whole product. And I suppose that's the difference between mass production and artisan production, that um, there's actually possibly a bit more ownership of a product that you feel you've entirely made yourself and one where you've paid a fairly small part in it. So there we go, um, we've had Marx and Adam Smith in a discussion about Taiwanese pens, that's wide ranging if nothing else. And I think at this point I really should stop boring you rigid and have a look at the pens. So here we go. And so here we go, um, this is a range of Twisby pens and they're sort of vaguely organised in price order with the little ones on the right which is uh, I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, so firstly what we have here is the Echo. And what we see immediately is 
it is a piston filler. Beloved of many serious pen fans. And there we go, there's a piston going up and down. And as you can see, the ink capacity is going to be pretty massive. You can see a very nice nib here. I don't think it does say Joe, but it probably says Twisby, which is probably appropriate. There we go. You can probably see better than me now. Um, but a nice looking pen. It's a plunger filler. And you probably expect it to be quite expensive. But it's not. This is the Echo. And as the name implies, it's built to be very economical. And it's about 28 quid at the moment. This is 19, 2017. Um, that's a very good buy for a fairly sophisticated piece of machinery. Next stage up, we look at the... There we go. And this is the classic. We'll have a look at that, much the same, apart from the fact it's not a demonstrator. But you'll note that there is actually a rather nice ink window here. You can see whether you've got any ink left or not. This is top of the range piston fillers pretty much. A little bit under 60 quid probably if you're lucky. And again piston filler. There we go. You can see the piston go up and down. Always enjoy that. And a very very smart looking pen in my view and again very reasonably priced. Then got a couple of minis and there aren't enough small pens about actually they do tend to be all massive these days and by and large the Twisbees are as you can see a decent sort of size but this is the mini you can see it's screw thread at the bottom there so you would correctly assume that when you post you can screw it on the back of the pen Screw the cap on the back. And that gives you a decent size pen, which hasn't taken up too much space in your pocket. There we go. But the other thing you're going to notice here, of course, is that this has a rod going down the middle of it. And you think that's a bit odd for a piston filler, and come to think of it, where's the piston? Well, of course, this is that most sophisticated of filling systems, a plunger. They call it the Mini Vac, and they do a bigger one called the Vac 17, but I'm afraid this is out of production at the moment. They're hoping to get it back into production fairly soon. Um, I suspect the Twisby are probably uh, similar to some of the Japanese companies, very much run by the production side of things rather than the marketing side, and that's why currently they don't have the large version of the plunger filler. But just to give an idea of how these work, as you push the plunger down, you're actually creating a vacuum behind it. And obviously if you hang about like me here, probably that vacuum slowly fills up. So the idea is to actually whack it down like that. But when it reaches the bottom, it opens the valve and the ink rushes in to fill the vacuum behind it. And one day we'll do a video showing exactly how that works. So that's the mini plunger filler. And as you'll see next door to the mini piston, it's actually just a little bit bigger to accommodate the mechanism. There we go. With both of these you're going to get a fair amount of ink in, but probably do rather better with the plunger. So a little pen with a, a big reservoir there. And we're going to look a little more closely at these in a moment. Okay then, so having had a quick overview of the pens, um, what do you get when you buy a Twisby? Well you get obviously a box with the Twisby logo on it. Not a very exciting box, but then this is all about the pen, it's certainly not about the box. Open it up, and there we go, another clear plastic box. Competent wrapping, nothing very exciting. And inside it you've got some instructions. A pen, of course, this is mine. It's a classic, available in other colours as well. You'd be pleased to hear. And rather surprisingly, a spanner and some silicon grease. 
why, you may ask yourself. Well, Twisby is a pen that encourages do-it-yourself maintenance. I mean, those of you that have had piston filling pens uh, will probably be aware that they don't take a lot of looking after, but should you wish to do it with Twisby, you can. And here are some instructions about how to start getting the piston out. And here, some fuller instructions about taking the pen to bits. Now, most of these pens are demonstrators, so actually being able to take them to bits and give them a fairly thorough cleaning is quite, quite a big advantage. And I've got to say, I have actually managed to take mine to bits, which is why I will never be putting it on public sale, you'll be relieved to hear. Um, and it was surprisingly easy, and eventually, after only a moderate amount of cursing, I managed to get it back together again, and it's working absolutely fine. Um, you've actually got some slightly more useful or more regularly useful information here about how to fill it. But it's a piston filling, you probably know how to do that anyway. Now, why should you want to take it to bits? Well, as I say, cleaning is, is possibly a useful thing with a uh, particular demonstrator. You might want to get ink residue out, you might want to get it back to its pristine condition. But also it gives you the opportunity to occasionally lubricate the piston mechanism hence the silicon grease. Now, I'm not convinced that pens really need a vast amount of servicing. Um, I'm sure if you want to get a professional to do it, that's, that, that's probably quite a sensible thing to do. But also, um, if you want to do it yourself, if I can do it, to be quite honest, anybody can. And there are some very good videos. I was looking at the one um, that Brian Goulet has put up on his website and I was strongly suggest you have a look at that until I do my own one and I might even after that probably suggest you look at Brian Goulet's one but here we go. So looking at a bit more detail about the pens um, this one is the classic nice little ink window here that I think I've reflected on before this one has an extra fine nib largely because that's the nib that was in the first one I picked up smooth as you like and also very firm. So if you're looking for flex at present, probably Twisby isn't for you. This is one of the Echo pens. This one's Jonathan's. This is the first one he bought. I suspect he's going to have a full set before we know what's happened. This has got a broad nib on, and here we go. Now talking about nibs, Most of them come in extra fine, fine, medium and broad and many of them have a 1.1 stub and some of them have a 1.5 stub. This is the top of the range. This is the Diamond 580. And one thing I do want to point out is that it does actually have a slightly larger nib. Um, those of you who are well versed in the ways of pens will have heard things like number 5 nibs and number eight nibs and number six nibs. This looks like a five to me, probably. This, not quite sure. All depends on the size of the feed. Um, a slightly larger and more elegant nib on this 580. Although again, as I say, it is actually a an extra fine on this particular model. It's nice to be able to see the ink in there. Jonathan's filled this with uh, sepia of some sort? I don't know. See how it writes. Well again, smooth as anything, um, but fairly firm. So, there we go. Now, the other tiny thing I want to point out is that I've been writing in a Twisby notebook. And these are very nice notebooks. Um, they come in this line ruling and also squares and plain. The paper is, I think, 70 gram. Uh, most notebooks these days seem to be around 80, so 70 is quite interesting. What you will notice is that the pages lie flat. They're really good. So it's, it's well bound, it's good paper. Um, I did try it out when I put my name in it. Oh dear. 
personalization, so there you are, John Hall. That's been using a very wet um, OMAS flex nib. And there has been a little bit of show through here, but actually no bleed through to the next page. So I think these are probably pretty good notebooks to use. Um, they seem to be, this seems to be slight, I'm not quite sure whether this is A4 or what actually. Let's have a quick look, we can check it with a piece of A4 paper. And yes, it's a bit smaller than A4. Um, there's one that's about half this size and another one a little smaller too. Um, I think I can recommend them without too much hesitation. So anyway, there we go. That's a quick zip through the wonderful world of Twisby. I will be doing some rather more detailed um, reviews at a later date. And I hope you've enjoyed this one, and come and buy Twisby pens. I think they're pretty good.